Hello, and welcome to the Pandemic Pantry, where today we're going to be making some English muffins. Why would we be making English muffins? We can just go and buy bread. Well, in these times, maybe you can't just go and buy bread. And we had run out of bagels, so I decided, well, let's make some English muffins. Interesting point, I learned recently that uh, English muffins in England are not called English muffins. This seems completely obvious in retrospect. They're just called muffins. Think about that for a little while. All right, so we're going to start out with 284 grams of flour, and then uh, 7 grams of sugar, and then uh, 5 grams of salt. Once we got those in, uh, we're going to put in the yeast, not the butter. Put the butter down. Yeah, we're going to put in the yeast. This is instant yeast. This is 3 grams of yeast. And uh, if you're using active dry yeast, uh, you'll want to prove it first. So you can do that in the milk that we're going to use with this. Uh, because instant yeast can go straight into the flour and it just hydrates the active dry yeast. That won't work, so don't follow my lead if you're using the active dry yeast. All right, so then we've got uh, 227 milliliters of milk. Don't do what I just did. Only put in three quarters of it check to see how the dough is doing, and then add some more if you need to. If you do it my way, you do it this way, and then you have to add flour, which kind of throws off some of the ratios. So better off doing it the correct way, which is to hold back some of the liquid. All right, well, either way, throw it in a bowl and uh, start mixing it up. I'm going to use my uh, mixer and uh, use a dough hook. Now, as it starts to come together, keep an eye on it and adjust as necessary, where I noticed this is not bread dough, this is some sort of batter, so we are going to need to add some flour. So uh, sprinkle in some flour, and once it is starting to look a little bit better, uh, no, I think that needs a little bit more flour. Let's try this. Uh, let's try this again. Now don't put in too much, or else this is what happens. That's what happens. It comes flying out. So I think that's looking a little bit better. So we'll let that go for a while. And uh, what we're looking for, so why I say it's looking a little bit better, is you can see it's starting to clear the sides of the bowl. And it starts pulling away from the sides of the bowl. It wants to hold together much more. And then at some point, it really clears it. and. It's going to freeze frame. There we go. So it's clearing the side of the bowl and it's sticking to the bottom. That's what we want. And it will go for a few minutes. Let it knead for a few minutes and then we get this nice elastic dough. Excellent. So let's get it out of that machine. Uh, let's get the ball out of the machine and we're going to we're going to form it into a nice ball and we're going to we're going to get it ready for its fermentation. It's going to ferment at room temperature for 60 to 90 minutes. Now this recipe comes from the bread baker's apprentice. Um, I've got the American version, which has all of it in American measurements, and so I'm converting it for you fine viewers into metric, which is a much more sensible system. All right, so form it into a ball, pulling around the sides, pinching it underneath, rolling it around a little bit, just firm it up and tighten it, and then we need to put that into an oiled bowl. The oil stops it from sticking as much to the bowl, so we can get it out with less degassing as well as uh, covers it up so it doesn't dry out. So swirl it around, flip it over, make sure all the parts get oily, and then need to cover it. Now most people use plastic wrap. I don't know, I don't see the point. It's kind of, just use a plate, just put a plate on top, that'll, that'll cover it. Uh, and put it away to ferment. Now it's been about 90 minutes. We need a, a piece of parchment paper with some oil on it and some cornmeal. Uh, and now we're going to portion this out. So to portion it out, we're going to make six, uh, six little English muffins, which means I need to take this into six, and that's one pound five ounces. Why am I dealing in pounds and ounces? I can't do this math. Let's just switch that to grams. Yep, switch it over to grams, and it is going to be, well, look, 600 grams. We need about 100 grams each. Perfect. So much easier. Alright, so get it off of there, and uh, 
cut this up into uh, 100 gram portions. So when we're cutting it up, we want to just weigh it out and then uh, do as few cuts as possible. Sometimes I'm better at this than other times, but generally you just kind of get a sense of it at some point and you can figure it out. I'm <laughs> See, at the very last one, hey, it all just worked out, 100 grams each. All right, so now that we've got those, form those into balls. We're going to be making a lot of little dough balls here. All right, so same technique as before, pulling around the sides, pinching underneath, and then swirling in your hand. So yep, pulling around, pinching underneath, pinch, 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 make a nice firm skin on top, and then swirl it in your fingers, in your hand, to get a firm ball. Now, that, that swirling part, you don't want to have any flour on the surface because it just is nearly impossible if you do that. So nice surface where it sticks to a little bit and then swirl it that way. All right, our next step is we need to get uh, some oil on top to stop any skin from forming. And I decided to brush them. In retrospect, watching all of this, I think, why didn't I just put them back in the bowl? I had a nice oil bowl. I could just swirl them around in there. Oh well. Put some uh, cornmeal on top and then cover it with a tea towel. Put it away to ferment for 60 to 90 minutes. When that is all done, put a pan on some medium, medium low heat. Get it nice and warm. Hot, hot. We're cooking on this. Keep it hot. And uh, uh, put them down. So we're going to cook them in the pan uh, six to eight minutes each side. And then we will flip them over, and that will have created a nice crust, both top and bottom. That's that traditional English muffin look. And, but we need to finish them off in the oven. Uh, the cooking in, on the pan may not have done it right. So take a look. What we're looking for is that it's golden brown and delicious, as Alton Brown would say, and just on the verge of burning. So you can see these ones, each one is nice and golden, and there's a couple spots that are starting to look a little dark. That's what we're looking for. This happened for me after about six minutes. So keep an eye on your pan. It could end up overheating because there's not a lot of liquid to be coming off and, and taking away the heat. So uh, I actually had to shut off my, my burner for a bit of time so that the pan could cool down but it's a nice cast iron, so it held the heat. They could keep cooking while that was happening. But just keep an eye on it. Um, if it starts smoking, turn down your heat, maybe turn it off for a little while. Let that happen. All right, so we take all three out when they're all looking good and uh, put them into the oven. Now you notice mine, well, maybe you don't notice. I notice mine are a little uh, large. They're not supposed to be this large and kind of floppy. I forgot about them for a while, so mine actually proved for probably closer to two hours or more rather than just uh, 90 minutes. That and I put them in something that was warmer than room temperature. So it all works out. We all make mistakes and we still get tasty food. So pull them out of the oven after uh, about uh, eight minutes and get them onto a wire rack to cool. Clean up the kitchen a little and wire rack down and just move them on over. So now those are done. The uh, last three have to uh, cook for a few more minutes. And we just move them off onto the sheet pan again. Or in this case, it's a roasting pan that I just put a piece of parchment paper in. And let them cook for their last eight minutes. And then they finish up. We pull them out, move that out of the way, and then pull them out. looking nice. 
turn off your oven so you're just not wasting energy. And now that the others have cooled for a little while, we can, we can taste test, see what we got. All right, I'm going to do the traditional method of opening these things up, which is to use a fork rather than a knife. And the fork is supposed to just give you a, I guess, more uneven texture inside, which is, I guess, what you want in these. Gives you nice nooks and crannies to, to fill up with jam or butter or peanut butter or hollandaise sauce. Oh, I should do an episode on, on Eggs Benedict. All right, nice, craggy, open texture. Let's get some butter on that. All right, this is, uh, I, I should point out, this is a very nice and warm English muffin. And this is butter that is sitting out on my counter. But my house is cold. This is how cold my house ends up being sometimes. Just give up and just take a bite. Yeah, this this is this is sad. Just take a bite. And how is it? Tasty. Alright, this has been the Pandemic Pantry. I hope you enjoyed this, and you'll all go off and make some of your own uh, rolls and bread products at home. English muffins are an easy one to start out with. So have a good day, and stay safe.